really excited. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Um, we're going to have uh, Zach and Hannah Hallow. Hallow. Uh, they're going to do a couple songs, and then uh, Coach Tang is going to come on right about one o'clock. Thank you so much. All right, guys, we'll leave and let him get up in here. <laughs> um, Coach Tang, can you hear us okay? Oh, I can hear you great. Oh, that was awesome. You, you call them the Hallows? The Hallows. They're oh. YouTube superstars. Oh, man, they are awesome. They are awesome. I used to, like, get upset with my kids. I'm like, what are y'all doing with all this YouTube stuff? And why do you need a YouTube channel? And now, I mean, it is a incredible platform to get a message out and and we need it <laughs> it is crazy they're like there's this guy mr beast there they're in like a lot of his videos and they get like 20 30 40 million hits it's just it's unbelievable the, the platform that you know right, that guys, people so have so they're, they're, you know, they're kind of using now, pretty cool um, which is great so yeah, about that, so. yeah it is it's awesome man thanks for having me on all right guys so look so what we're what we're going to do now um we have Coach Jerome Tang. Uh, he's the associate head coach at, uh, at Baylor. Uh, and uh, we're going to ask him a bunch of questions and kind of what players need to be doing right now, what coaches need to be doing right now, what, you know, skill development, what you should be, how you should be reaching out to coaches, and just a, a lot, go over a lot of different topics. And um, Coach Tang just has a, a, a wealth of information, and he's been so kind to kind of take the time out of his day and try to give back and um, share with you guys on, on what you need to be doing and then we're going to kind of do the second half of the of the interview we're going to go over what's going on what, what what's going on with their program like how you know when they, they got the program it was one of the, the craziest things that ever happened in college basketball 17 years ago and now you know they were the number one team in the country most of the year like how how does how does that happen so and i think he's going to be so kind he's going to kind of give us the secret to that so um, but yeah, so I'm going to start with um, with our first question. Uh, hey, Coach, if you're a high schooler right now, and um, you've got a lot of girls and boys players on here, uh, what should you be doing right this moment to improve your game? I know they got to stay at home, um, but what can they be doing while they're home? And uh, and then also, what would you recommend? How how would you recommend their high school AU coaches to be kind of encouraging them while we're in this? You know, that's that's a that's a great question, and I think the most important thing you said was stay at home okay uh, I know that every young guy and young girl out there wants you know you look forward to April you know the different circuits you look forward to July and you know all, all of that and uh, but we will not have a July if you don't stay at home right now okay and so number one thing while at home you can do push-ups, you can do sit-ups, you can do crunches, you can do leg lifts, you can do jumping jacks, you can run around, you can go for a jog and stay away you know, from everybody. Just don't be in a, in a closed um, area. I, I got on my, my son the other day when we were in Kansas City because he was wearing a bandana on his face. And I was like, dude, you are, you're just being too extra, right? And, uh, and come to find out, now they're telling us we need to wear a mask when we leave. So that's that that's the thing just uh there's a lot of things that that i mean your pe teacher used to make you do when you were in the second third and fourth grade they're going to work really great right now 
you know, keep yourself in, in decent cardio. So I do ball handling, stationary ball handling drills, dribble in the garage, not in the house, so you don't get in trouble with your parents. Um, you know, those type of things. If you have a, a goal in your, your driveway, you know, shoot some jump shots and stuff. One thing I'd like to add is, uh, I remember Tom Kanchowski spoke at our All-American camp probably five or six years ago. He's, he's kind of known as the king of New York anytime you see uh, those videos about LeBron or, or and those guys, Tom Kanchowski is kind of dubbing it from when he was in high school, so he's kind of the most well-known scout. When he spoke to uh, to our camp, which was which was at University of Virginia, like back in 2014, I think, uh, his thing was like jump rope. Your best friend should be your jump rope. That's I know he's about as old school as it gets, but I mean, you could be doing find find a jump rope, and I mean that's one. Even boxers do that, and they're one of the most in shape athletes in the world. And coach, and what what are if you don't mind, I know some of this could be proprietary information, but what are your players doing at Baylor right now? Uh, are you just saying hey? Just, how are you guys keeping what are you, the, what are your... the, that's a good the NCA allowed us to um, for our guys who are at home and most of our guys well several half of our team went home half of our team had stayed here in Waco uh, but they're they're staying in their apartments they're not allowed to go to the gym or the weight room we were allowed to send them a few pieces of equipment uh, one we sent them bands for stretching for lateral stuff and then we sent them jump ropes. And so you're, yeah, I mean, I, we do, like, especially with our forwards, we do three minutes of jump rope every day. It is a ritual and they have a routine. So, so the jump rope is the best thing. And you can go, you know, one minute rest and then build up. You can build up where you can go three minutes and, you know, do like a boxer, right? You say, you know, do three rounds of jump ropes for three minutes, rest a minute. It's a great cardio and it's great for your feet and your hands. I mean, it, it, it does an unbelievable job. So that that's what our guys are doing. Um, you know, there's a I, they've they've kind of shut down all the outdoor courts, so it's hard to you know go outside and get some shots up. And they all stay in uh, either on campus or off campus apartments, so it's not like they have a goal in their driveway. But we're telling them the same thing that I'm saying right here. The most important thing is stay inside, stay healthy, allow. This, this curve to flatten so that uh, we have a chance to get back to life as normal by June, maybe July. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump off top, jump off to the next item. Uh, if you're, for the freshmen, sophomore, and juniors right now that are, you know, probably more so the juniors than anyone because freshmen, sophomore, you guys have plenty of time. But for the juniors right now that are worried, you know, they, I'm going to lose my whole July um, and we're gonna, we already lost April. What what do they need to be doing to, if they want to play college basketball? What What do you like to see as a as a as a, I know you're a high major college coach, and you know that's 0.01 percent are the guys that you recruit. But from from your from what you recruit, and then also um, what the Division two, II, Division three level guys are are recruiting. What What do they need to be doing to kind of gar- try to garner interest while everything is shut down right now, since that you can't go out in, in April well, and July. Or, the rest of these tournaments you know we don't uh, like we don't have an opportunity right now to to add guys to our list that we're going to get a chance to see play live so the guys who were already on our list um you know they become priority for us um i would say that's the same way for any coaches out there so if you're a kid right now and you're being you were being recruited by whatever school it is you know school x at division whatever you know, you need to make sure that you stay in contact with that person. And if there are any schools that you're interested in, and, and part of this is um, kids have to really understand, um, ha- be willing to, to have a grasp of what level they're at. You know, and I, I get a ton of emails every day, and, and I'm not watching a bunch of highlight films, okay? I'm, I'm going to watch for a couple seconds, you know, and then I, if it sparks my interest, I need to see a game. You know, um, you know, just just those type of things. They're just it's, I, and that's the way a lot of uh, coaches are. Your high school coaches. You asked about high school coaches and AAU coaches. Right now, those are probably your best references. You know, an email from a mom or a dad, that's probably not helping you as much right now. But if your high school coach will send a short email to to the coaches and 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 it's a short one. I got a a, a guard, six three. You know, 170 pounds, wingspan, you know, started on varsity for two years, you know, that kind of thing. 
you know and uh if you want game film i can send it to you that kind of thing and a lot of a lot of times they people put links and you have to click and it goes to a huddle and then you have to click again and you know if if i have a hundred of those i'm not it, it's tough to roll through all those if you can put the video in the email so that i just have to hit that arrow and it plays that that makes it awesome because I, i'm more likely to do that than i am to sort through and um so but but having your high school coach or your aau coach send an email and uh like make sure that if you're sending the email that you put uh the right school on there because i've gotten a lot of emails <laughs> you know to temple and <laughs> other places so if you're gonna like don't mass text right now mass email right now it just especially if you're trying to gain interest you need to like figure out man what are the schools that i would be interested in what are the schools my coaches think i can not just play at but have an impact at and then you know really really um focus in on those schools to try and get their interest first because sometimes you know like i'll get one and i'll look at it and i'll be like man you know kick and play we don't need that i forwarded sorry about that somebody tried to call me uh forwarded on to uh an, an, another school or a coach that i know that maybe i've talked to him and he said he was looking for a certain kid and so i mean that's that that's something that that would really help out aau coaches uh, high school coaches can really help out in that area yeah and coach i, I was want to add too that when you talk about the highlight video yeah that's the only reason the highlight video is to spark interest but then include a game tape link because if you if you see something you like you're going to want to see a game um, yes yes the, it's not you're not going to offer up a highlight video unless you look you're like 6a and and LeBron or something like that, but <laughs> 99, you, you know, you got to, it's just spark interest and then include some game footage with it. And, uh, and then, and like you said, make it personal. Don't just, don't just send a mass email out to everyone. So it's all, all great stuff. Now, this is, this is kind of the tricky one because I don't think we've ever been in this situation in history. Um, seniors right now, what do they do? I mean, I get the same, I know we do the same thing with, you know, you're emailing coaches, and they can't, but they can't go on visits. They're not going to be able to do, go to tryouts. And I know most of them are probably, you know, kind of the lower, lower looking probably more the D2, D3, JUCO type guys, maybe maybe going to post grad year or something like that. But what do what do seniors do right now, where everything is, you know, they, they can't go on college campuses, they can't do they can't do anything. What is, what is your advice for, for that for that subset that that normally waits for the spring of their senior year? Uh, man, that's a that's a tough one, and. Um... I would say that if somebody was real, find out who wants you. If somebody really wanted you or showed interest in you, this is the time, you know, that you, you really need to follow up with the ones that really want you. Um, but to you, you're really going to have um, you're going to need like a team around you of people that the coaches trust in order to to spark a lot of interest right now because there's so many transfers out there you know that probably most of the staffs at whatever level were first combing through the transfers because there's videotape of them there's stats of them there are other coaches in the league we can talk to to get a, a really solid reference on them you know those kids have been through you know college practice before they've they've had to get up and go to class and and then come and lift weights and then have a practice and get up they, they they've been through a rigor of a a, co a year of college so that those 617 however many they are right now i mean that's who those seniors are competing against and so that that, that that's a tough situation and it's unfortunate uh that we didn't have april that um and if we don't make good decisions that we may not have july but um that that's that, that's one of those situations. I wish I had something better to say in that, but um, I would say yeah. keep yourself in physical shape right now and, and stay away and let's hope this thing can pass so that maybe you have July and you have August before school starts to, to get yourself in front of some people. Yeah, to me it seems like those guys are going to have to 
<clears throat> more live on their resume than anything and what they what they did in high school, their game tape from high school and highlight videos and game tape and what they did in AAU and having having good references from AAU and, and high school coach. And you know, can, can I say something like, uh, you know, that's why it's so important when when you when you're playing the game, that you, you have to understand that the the other team might be your opponent, but that other coach may become your advocate. You know, it's that's a multi-dimensional dude on that other bench. He's not just the coach you're trying to beat. He might be the coach that can make the phone call to help you. And so your attitude when you play against that other coach and how you play and stuff i mean that might be the dude who knows the coach that can offer you a scholarship based on his recommendation so you we, we have to understand that also as you're going through this journey and that's for the younger guys right now right yeah i mean it, the, the college basketball world is so so you think it's big but it's so small and everybody knows everybody i'm just Someone from the middle of nowhere in North Carolina. How do I know Coach Tang out in Waco, Texas? You know, one of the top assistants in the country. Just everybody, you know, everybody knows everybody in this business. So you just have to, that's, you know, that's also relationships. How you how you're treating your high school coach? How you're treating people you're playing against? How you're treating that that small college coach that's recruiting you that you think you're better than? So that's mm -hmm. just, you know, that's, that's it's all, it, everything just kind of gets around. These guys do their do their work, coach. And I want to um. I want to kind of transition it over uh, to the Baylor program because I'm just it's fascinating to me how when you guys got there 17 years ago, I don't I can't even remember exactly that that story, but I know it was, it was probably one of the worst things that ever happened in college basketball, and um, and you know you guys got it from the very bottom and then you know bringing it to now you know num number one program in the country for much for much of the year. Um, there's one thing from one thing from that that I've been hearing about is the that you guys kind of I guess make your program uh, known about and it's the the J O W joy and can you kind of explain that and um... uh, yeah you know Coach Drew uh, I think it was a few years ago we were watching uh, Clemson win the national championship and Dabo Sweeney uh, said that. Uh, you know, we're just a team. We play with joy and, you know, Jesus, others, ourselves last, yourself last. And uh, that really resonated with Coach. And uh, the the acronym uh, really defined what Coach has been about his whole life. You know, and uh, it comes straight from Scripture. You know, when the, 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 the rich guy asked Jesus, young man said, Gee, you know, what's the... You know what's the most important commandment and jesus said you know love god with all your heart soul mind and strength and then and then jesus said and the second one is like under this to love your neighbor as yourself and then he told him he said you know uh, sell all you have and give it to the poor okay and and how that relates to our program is that first of all you know the first thing we want to do with everything we do is honor jesus and uh if you put jesus first then then everything else will fall into place. But then the second thing is like that, loving your neighbor as yourself, putting your teammates before yourself. Coach Drew has constantly put his staff and the people around him before himself. He's never sought the honor himself. He's always given the honor. When we win, it's the players. You know, when we lose, he takes the blame. You know, everything is just about the players. So, you know, we're just following those commandments. But then the last thing, you know, when he said that, you know, sell all you have and give to the poor, that's, that's where... He was saying the thing that's important to you, be willing to give it away. And for some people, it's credit, and you give that away. For some people, it's the knowledge they have about the game. And, and right now, what a greater platform. What what better platform? This is a bigger platform that we have right now than had we won the national championship. You know, because everybody wants to hear what's being said right now. Everybody out there is looking for some kind of peace and assurance and security in their life. And we have that answer in Jesus Christ. We have it. And, and, and he says to us who are rich in faith to give it to the poor, give it to those who are lacking, you know? And so that whole acronym of playing with joy and playing with a smile on your face and, you know, and, and just loving Jesus first. But like, if our guys, I mean, we tell them, I tell them all the time, look, man, even if you don't take the aspect of Jesus 
if you put others first and then yourself second, we're going to be a better team. You know, and so it's about, you know, bringing guys into the kingdom, but bringing them into the kingdom, showing them that there are biblical principles that you can apply to your life, that even if you don't acknowledge that Jesus is the son of God, that those biblical principles, it, it, the word is clear that if you plant those seeds, it's going to grow. Those are, are things you can have in your life. Every great book that's out there right now, the, the power of a positive team, you know, uh, all the different things that, you know, chop wood, carry water, all those things, man, that, that are out there right now all those great books the leadership books that are written you can take all their principles that they use and go back to the bible and find verses where jesus where god he, he, he shared those principles long ago and so it, it's it's tried and it's true and so that's the thing that we've done to try and just be the the foundation of what we are about uh, as a basketball program and then build on that um, I want to ask you about Mark Vida. We had funny stories. We had him. We had him at. I think it was our first All American camp. Uh, with it was like Isaiah Briscoe was there and Kobe Simmons, guys in the playing the NBA, and Mark Vida and and, uh, and a couple other NBA guys. But Mark, I remember one story from Mark Vida. He was like he's the only kid in, in the history of probably I don't know done 500, 1, thousand camps and had like thirty thousand kids come through. He's the only kid I remember that that punched another kid in the face. And, and um, so I just want to know, like, what what, his, what was his situation where he, you know, where he, when he got there, and then I saw something incredible happen to him in the middle of the year this year, and I just want to kind of, I want, can you just give me his story on, on from when you recruited him to when he got there to what happened this year? And you know, Mark, yeah, Mar Mark's from Lake Charles, Louisiana, and uh, he came and visited us very early as an eighth grader, a friend of mine, a guy I know that um, thought he had a chance to be a really good player, and he came to campus early, and we started developing a relationship with him, and um, he moved to Dallas to live with a, a coach there, and, and you know, he was just, he's a, he's a YouTube sensation with all his dunking. I mean, he was dunking as a sixth grader and, and everything, but He's always a very tenacious guy. Lake Charles, the area he's from, is not, it's a pretty rough area. And so, um, you know, I've seen Mark just grow and grow as a young man. And, and you know, it, through a lot of adversities. I, I'm going to tell you, like, I remember there was probably in the space of five weeks that if I talked to him once a week, it, like three of those five weeks, someone in his family or someone close to him had died, had been killed. You know, and it was, I mean, he'd been through some things. And so, you know, our responsibility is to love. You know, Jesus said, the, by this, all men will know that you're my disciples if you have love one towards another. And so it's not, not what you say. It's not how you act. But it's about loving and those types of relationships. So uh, we just kept loving Mark. You know, he came to Baylor, and, and he's a heck of a talent. Okay, I'm just telling you, that, I mean, God blessed him with some physical things and with a mindset, and he has a toughness about him that, that not everybody has. And so uh, he's developed and developed and developed. Well, you know, in searching for the answer, I think a couple of years ago, he started studying Islam, just looking for an answer, looking for something in his life. And, um, and during that time, I mean, he'd still go to chapels. He would still be in Bible study on the plane. He would read his Quran. And I mean, and, and our job then was to continue to love him, you know, and not pass judgment. And we have a guy on our staff, Pastor Brewer, who works with nations of coaches. And Pastor Brewer did a great job of loving him and walking him through that time. And then this year, as God continued to move in his life, he called Pastor Brewer and said, man, I, I need... I, I want to make a change. I want, like, God spoke to him in a dream and said to, to show himself real to him. And, you know, Mark had a salvation experience. And then quickly after that said, Pastor Brewer, I need to be baptized. And uh, he was, he got baptized the day before we played uh, Kansas, a Friday night. We was going to play Kansas at home on Saturday morning. And it would happen to be the anniversary of his uncle passing. One of his uncles passing away a few years ago that was really close to him. And so it was great. The whole team was there, support staff, everything. But it was wonderful 
And it has been wonderful to see how God has really allowed Mark to mature and to grow. And so from the kid who in the seventh grade or whatever it was would punch another kid because he got mad on the court or something to now a young man when the crowd was going crazy at Texas Tech and, you know, because they were making a run and, and you know, it seemed like things could get away that, that he looked at his whole team and he just said, hey, everybody calm down. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. You know, to when we're at Kansas, 16,300 are going nuts. And, you know, and that, that when he could look at his teammates and say, man, don't worry about it. We're going we're gonna to be okay. We're going to be okay. And, and, and adds that calmness to a situation, you know, and just, and, and that's not, uh, that's God. That's something only, only God can do. And so we're so proud of Mark. We're so proud of all of our guys. But, hey, Joe, we had a team of guys that, uh, that really, they, they wanted more than fire insurance, you know. <laughs> they wanted more than knowing that they were going to go, they're not going to go to hell, you know. They, 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 they wanted a deeper walk with God, and we, we, we practiced, like, I mean, we had praise and worship in our pregame chapel and uh, just just really was able to help these guys. God, I believe that God was preparing them and, and laying a foundation for them so that when this hit, I mean, when this thing hit, we're at the Big 12 tournament a few hours away from getting ready to play K-State, you know, and uh, with a with a real good chance, you know, to win the Big 12 tournament, with a really good chance, you know, to win the NCAA tournament. You know, it wasn't like a, you know, a far, that far fetch of a thing, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and I mean, you never know if you're, it's going to happen or not, but when you get that taken away from you, if all you have in your life is basketball, then that's a life and death thing. But when your foundation is in Jesus Christ, when that gets taken away, when we had to call them together to tell them that the season was over, and as a staff, we was like, man, y'all are the best set of guys, and we just, love. And, and it was like a somber thing, and, and one of our seniors, uh, Obama Kike, he said, look, we're not gonna make this a sad thing. He said, we, we've had joy all year long, so we're going to have joy right now. And I can look around this room, and I can talk about every one of these guys that's sitting here. And I can tell you about the great times we've had together, about the laughs that we've had together, about the, I mean, and it just changed the whole mood. And the rest of the time, we were just laughing and telling jokes and just having, like, great memories. And those guys, I mean, it's just been awesome, but that's not... Uh, that doesn't happen without a foundation of Jesus Christ in your life. So I have a couple more questions, but I, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, get into, well, first of all, for people that may be tuning in late, we got Coach Tang, uh, Baylor Associate Head Coach, and I'm Joe, uh, Jesse Davis, my brother. Um, and uh, we had Zach and Hannah Hallow on earlier. Uh, did a few songs prior to, prior to us starting. And um, so what what we're going to do now is we're going to go. Uh, my brother Jesse's going to do one song, uh, and then he's going to share a message uh, that um, that God gave him. And uh, for, for this time right now, and um, we're going to go back. We're going to come back. Uh, maybe do one more song with Zach and Hannah Hallow, and then we'll come back with Coach Tang. And, uh, and then we'll do a question and answer. So you would just shoot us questions on the Instagram. I'll Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? He is. He's gonna. My brother Jesse, Jesse Davis, is uh, gonna go over a, a message um, from Romans. And uh, then we're going to, right after that, we, I think we may do one more song, and then uh, we'll do a question and answer. But um, Brother Jesse has a, 
has a word that um, I think will be uh, very inspiring and, and help, help a ton in this time of fear and panic and turmoil and, and everything that's, that's going wrong in the world. He's going he's gonna to share what's going right. So, um. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I wanted to introduce myself first. I am Jesse Davis, Joe's older brother, in fact. Uh, we were separated by about... 11 and a half years or so, and so about the time I went off to college, he was just starting grades, he was starting kindergarten, I think, and so, yeah, I always kept track of everything that was going on with sports and, and, and every, anything else that happened during those years, but uh, I went off to college, and I went to North Carolina School of the Arts in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and um, it was there that I met my wife, Leslie, and we've been married now for... 20, going on 21 years, we got married back in 19, and back in 1999, right after graduating college, and then we took off for Waco, Texas, and went to Baylor University for our master's degree. So uh, we actually spent three out of four years from 19, from 1999 to 2003. In the beginning of 2004, we moved back to North Carolina. Um, the passage that I felt like God had laid on my heart to share this week comes from actually the book of Hebrews. And uh, it's a very hard book to understand, especially for people of the modern day and, and young people in particular. And I'm, I'm really uh, primarily focusing on the young people that are on this call, but parents as well. So I want to read this passage and then hopefully lay it open so that uh, some of these things will become more clear and you learn a little bit more about who Jesus is and how he wants to include you into his kingdom. So here it is. This is uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 and I'm going to read through verse 15 and then I may include a couple more verses as well. So it's not a very long passage but it is jam-packed. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Um, I'm going to do something I didn't necessarily plan to do, but uh, let's pray just for a moment. Father, this is your word, and I pray that you will bless the hearers of your word. Bless me as I, uh, as I share. And back to uh, verse 11. Christ came as high priest of the good things to come. Paul is writing to a, an audience that is quite a bit different than even the average audience of his day. He's writing to Hebrews. He's writing to basically what we would call Jewish people, those that um, were considered children of Abraham. They had far different practices than we uh, know much about today. Um, in fact, they had a king. They had rulers. In early Israel, they had their own kings. One of the greatest was King David, who is well known for killing uh, the giant, Goliath, and then became a powerful king. His son Solomon became the wealthiest king that ever existed. Their kings kept them safe. Their kings brought them security and wealth. Um, however, they were looking for a greater king. They were looking for uh, what a term you may have heard of, a messiah to come. In fact, it was promised. It was promised by uh, many Old Testament prophets, including Moses, who is the writer of the first five books of the Bible. And um, in, in the book of Genesis, God promises Eve that he will provide a seed that will crush the serpent's head. This seed 
was going to be the Messiah who would come and all Israel looked forward to that time. They were especially look for, looking forward to it during the time of Jesus' time because they were under an oppressive rule, an oppressive rule of Roman uh, emperorship of a, a time where they did have freedom to worship, but not, uh, not much more. So they looked for a king, a new king, and this Messiah was going to be it. He was going to come in and he was going to free them of that oppressive rule and become their king and sit on the throne of David. And he, he says, um, Christ came, that's another word for Messiah, Christ came as high priest of the good things to come. So he's letting them know that, you know what, there's something else that the Messiah is going to be. Not just a king, not just the one that's going to free you from the oppressive Roman rule. No, he's going to be a high priest. You know what? They had another MVP or VIP that they were looking for, that that they just practically worshipped. It certainly aided their worship, and he was the high priest. You see, um, the Jewish people had a covenant with God, the creator of the universe. And under this covenant, they could be made they could be made whole, they could be renewed, they could have their sins forgiven by um, by the high priest offering sacrifices, bulls and goats and birds and other kind of animals as well. And so um, these sacrifices of innocent animals would shed their blood, and that blood would wash away their sin. In fact, um, it says later on in the same chapter, without the shedding of blood is no remission of sin. And that was uh, well known throughout the, uh, the Jewish people and written in those exact same words in the Old Testament as well. So um, they had a high priest. They weren't lacking that. But Christ, their Messiah, was going to come as high priest. And Paul wanted them to know that for a very important reason. Because... Um, This was going to be an ending of the Old Covenant. Because of all of the sacrifices that were being made, they had to be continued over and over. Every year, more and more animals slaughtered, their blood shed, sprinkled on everything, on the people, to to forgive their sins. And yet, it was never enough. It was never enough. And they kept falling back into sin. They kept falling away from their first love. And you know what? We do the same thing. We have a pandemic that's going through the world right now. Not the one you're thinking of. Not the coronavirus. It's a pandemic of sin. It's a pandemic that began in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve and extends to you and I from the time that we're born. We're born with this sin nature, and it separates us from God. And I want you to know this morning, this afternoon now, or wherever you are, if you're in California, it's still morning, that there is a sacrifice that can wash away your sin. Because, see, God also gave us a conscience. And that conscience alerts you and I to the fact that we have that sin, that we can't live up, that I just sang a song, is he worthy? Jesus Christ is the one that's worthy, but we are not. We're not worthy to stand before a holy and righteous God who one day we will face, face to face, and have to answer for our life. So what was it that the Jewish people were living under that forced them into the situation of constant sacrifice, of the need for that high priest? Maybe you're familiar with it. Last night it showed on ABC. It's called the Ten Commandments. And I want to go through just a few of them now to kind of... uh, let you know um, what those are or remind you. Um, So one of them is about lying. Have you ever told a lie? Have I ever told a lie? One of the commandments is, thou shalt not lie. So God lays down that that command. He created us. He, He has the right to do that. He's also worthy and holy and can never tell a lie. And yet we do, and it separates us from him. Have you ever stolen anything? Maybe just something minor. Have you ever dishonored your father or your mother, not obeyed simple things that they ask you to do for your own good? Have you ever wanted something 
that wasn't yours? Just in in those few commandments, when we stand before God, what will be our excuse? We would be guilty of being a lying, thieving, disobedient, and covetous person. I want to read a verse that's near the end of Hebrews, then I'm going to wrap it up, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray with me. Um, This is verse 27 and 28. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. You see, we all have an appointment. And it's become very apparent just in these recent days with the, the advent of the coronavirus. And there are people that have come down with this and, and otherwise healthy. And yet suddenly their life has taken a terrible turn. Some have died. Others that have been older and maybe um, had several more years left to enjoy, and yet this, this virus has come in and taken it away. You see, there is an appointment that each one of us has. It's an appointment with death. But it's not the end, because right after that, we face the great judge. We face God. And I want to keep going, because it doesn't end there. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. This is the good news. You see, Jesus came. He arrived as a little baby, just like we did. He arrived born of a virgin. He grew up as a child, just like you and me. Yes, it was a different culture. Many of the same things. He had a father that was earthly. Jesus, he lived a perfect life. He lived a life that you and me failed to live. And he did it because God loves you. God loves me. He came to live that perfect life so that he could be the perfect sacrifice. So there would be no more need for the sacrifice of bulls and goats. Their blood is no, no, no longer necessary, but his blood washes away our sins for everyone who puts their faith in him. I wanted to share one illustration and uh, this is uh, relevant for today as well and with the virus. I've been keeping up with a lot of the new scientific discoveries. And one of them is not really new. It's been around for decades, in fact, maybe even 150 years. And that is the power of antibodies from someone that has survived a virus to be an effective treatment for someone who hasn't had the virus yet or has, has gotten the virus and is very sick. And so here we go. So, as I was saying, in the blood of those that have survived this coronavirus, there are antibodies. And those antibodies are potentially a cure for those that haven't had the disease yet or that get it and become very sick. And uh, this is a science that's been around a long time, and I don't know whether this will actually be used extensively, but it's certainly one of the possibilities of several that are out there. And what the reason I brought that up is because it ties right in to what I'm sharing with you now, and that is in the blood of Jesus, there is the cure for the pandemic of sin that has infected you and I and everyone else in this entire world. And all we have to do is come to Him in faith. The book of Ephesians it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, lest anyone should boast. So in just a second, I'm going to pray. And um, if you feel that uh, God is speaking to you and you would like to commit your life to Christ, would you pray along with me? And uh, and then we're going to invite Zach and Hannah back on with us. And uh, they're going to sing a, a beautiful song, Oh, Come to the Table, to the Altar. And I would like to ask during that song, if you pray this prayer with me, would you indicate it by waving or hearting? Or thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, all right. So let's pray. Father, we come to you now admitting that our sin has separated us from you, from a right relationship with you. And we need you. We need you in our lives. And because you loved us, you gave us your son. And by faith, we come to you now and accept Jesus. We accept His sacrifice. We accept Him to be our high priest. 
that with his own blood he washes away our sin and cures us of what it is that separates us from you. Thank you for saving us. We also cast down all of the things in our life that we have elevated to where you should be. And in its place, we place Jesus Christ as Lord of our life. Lord and Savior. And we thank you for the work that you have done through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, if, you said that, if you said that prayer with, uh, with Jesse, um, first time committing your life to Christ or you're rededicating your life, give, send, wave at us or send us a thumbs up. And then also, if you don't mind, shoot us a DM and just tell it with your email and phone number so we can try to follow up and give you more information on, uh, on starting your walk with Christ. And uh, yeah, just send us a thumbs up or, or a, a wave and, and then maybe if you don't mind, shoot us a DM with your, with your email and your phone number and we'll try to follow up with kind of more information if you, uh, if you accepted Christ uh, for the first time or you rededicated your life. Um, that's great. Great news. Oh, awesome. Great. Great, Jeffrey. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, Connor. Oh, that's great, Jalen. Awesome. Yeah, keep him coming. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. Um, we're going to go into a, um, we're going to go go into a song with uh, with Zach and Hannah, and then Amen, Amen, Amen. Renau, Renaus, and Trey. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. Wow, that's great. That's great. Oh man, that's great. Yeah, send us a DM. Just send it to our DMs or reply to the text if you got a text from us with your with your phone number and. Or with your email, and we'll try to hopefully try to get you some some literature to try to can help you with your walk with Christ and and um, the happiness and joy and uh, that you're you're going to receive for, for for Christ being in you is just is um, better than anything the the world could ever could ever give you and um, it's just a just a blessing that uh, that so many of you you know made this decision. That's great. Oh man, praise the Lord. Oh, that's great. Um. Hannah, I think Coach Tang, we're going to go off with you for a second, and then uh, and then we're going to try to bring Zach and Hannah. They're going to do a quick song, and then we're going to do a question and answer for um, Amen. We're going to do a, a, a question and answer with uh, Coach Tang. He'll come right back in like five, five minutes. And uh, Zach and Hannah, they're you know they're so talented and and um, they're such a heart for God, and and we're excited to hear them their last song, and then uh, keep going. So. Jesus. 